Hello crafty friends, today we're going to be working in the small art journal just doing an intuitive um, art journaling piece. This little journal I made myself just using some scrap papers. I do have a YouTube tutorial that I will link below if you'd like to make one too or if you don't want to make one and you'd like to buy one I do have some ready-made ones in my Etsy shop. The link will be below too. Now these are just scrap papers that we're going to use for texture and I use them in mostly all of my art journaling pieces. If you are new to art journaling and don't have such little bits of scraps accumulated yet, I do sell little packs in my Etsy shop. I have packs of 50 plus pieces, all little off cuts, different textures. Some have got punched holes or punched shapes which create beautiful texture and those are available for you if you're just starting out and want to give art journaling a go. I'm going to be working intuitively. I'm not quite sure yet what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to start by picking out a few pieces of the scrap paper to work as my collage background. And I'm just going to start pasting those down with some Mod Podge, just pieces here and there. Nowhere specific, there's no rhyme or reason really, just where I think it should go. And you could also use, if you don't have Mod Podge, you could use gel medium or craft glue, whatever you have handy. I find this collage part of art journaling for me very therapeutic and relaxing. A lot of people have asked before why do I put all this collage down if I'm just going to cover over it with paint and other medium and if you'd like to know the answer to that and to see a comparison of an art journal page with and without collage in the background I do have a video that I created a little while back. I'll put a link to that in the description below if you'd like to have like to see uh, the difference between using collage and not using collage. At this point I'd also like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. I have lots of videos coming out, um, art journaling, junk journals. This channel is the home of the full deck challenge where we're altering now our second deck of cards and also hit the little bell so you're notified every time I upload new content. You can add as little or as much collage background as you want. I'm covering most of my background paper because I don't really like that color because I've used scrap paper. But if it is a scrap paper that is a beautiful color, a lovely pattern, you can keep more of it showing. It really is up to you and just do what comes intuitively and what makes you happy. I do love this design paper with the turquoise and I was trying to use it somewhere in the background but I'll find a use for it later on in the project. I'm now going to add some white gesso. I'm just applying it with my finger. You could also use a paintbrush, whatever you prefer. I'm not applying the gesso everywhere. I'm just sort of concentrating on the edges between each collage piece and also over the larger areas. I'm trying to tone everything down and also blend one into the other. Otherwise, it'll just look like pieces of paper stuck down. This gives it what I call a misty look. I feel it pushes everything into the background and it blends everything and gives it a sort of a flowy look. So it's not just separate pieces of paper stuck down everywhere. If you apply too much gesso, you can just use a baby wipe to wipe some of it away or to help blend it over the rest of the artwork. We're now going to apply some color. I'm going to start with the pink. I'm feeling I want something pink. I'm just using the Tim Holtz um, Oxide Ink Spray. I'm just splashing some on and then using a spray bottle of water to spray over and a wet paintbrush to move the ink around on the page. You could also use watercolors, acrylic paints, gelato crayons, watercolor pencils, any color medium you have. The pink color that I'm using is called Kitsch Flamingo. Next up, I want to add some more texture. I'm going to be using texture paste with some stenciling. This stencil is available from PM Artist Studio. I will put a link to their website below. So just using my palette knife, I'm going to spread the texture paste over part of the stencil on the left hand side. And then I'm going to do a little bit on the right hand side too. And then dry the texture paste really well. 
I'm loving the colors, but I'm finding them a little bit blech. So I want to add something a little bit brighter. I'm going to use my Color Burst Powder in turquoise, just putting a few little specks and then spraying some water. And then I'll move the book around and let the color move in between the grooves of the texture paste. I've applied a little bit too much on the left. As you can see, it is super bright. It's very, very concentrated. So I just spray some water and then dab it with a tissue to try to pick up some of that color so it's not quite so dark. You could leave it dark if you prefer. I wanted something a little bit lighter. I also want to add a little bit of splatter. I'm going to use a turquoise acrylic paint that I'm going to water down. It's a very similar color to the color burst powder that I used and that's what I'm looking for. And then I'm just going to water it down and use a small paintbrush and just splatter it over the artwork. I find splattering a good way of spreading color sort of throughout the artwork without having big sections of a certain color. The splatter sort of blends it in and just lets it spread in a very balanced way. For some elements to decorate my art journal page, I'm going to be using this book. It's called Essentials by Marlene. It's a book full of die cuts and papers, really bright and vivid and really fun images. And I'm going to be using a few of those just to liven up my page and to make my focal points. So I'm using this super fun girl, her body's like a big flower and the word bloom. I love the bright pink and I think the size and the image work really well. And then there's my little pieces of cute paper that I wanted to use earlier. I'm going to find a way to put them onto the spread as a bit of a enhancement and to add some dimension. Once I'm happy with the placement of everything, I'm going to just add everything with craft glue. My little pieces, I'm going to put sort of like tabs. The turquoise part is going to hang off the page. I do like things sort of sticking up and out of the pages. I don't like everything always just in the confines of the page. So I'm adding those there and then I'm going to stick down my word bloom and my little flower girl. I found a few more elements from the book that I want to use. They're just little circles with some black designs on in different blues and turquoises. And I'm just going to add them here and there just to break up the background and create some balance. To balance out all the black that is in the die cuts, I want to balance it out a bit. So I'm going to do some black splatter with some watered down black acrylic paint. I'm just covering my main elements as I don't want them to have any black splatter on them. Just cover them with some scrap papers, which you can later use as collage background if they've got splatters on. They're a bit fun. And just using a small paintbrush, just splashing here and there. With my white Posca pen, I'm just going to add a few highlights on the word bloom and on the flower part of the girl's dress. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video. I really hope you enjoyed this intuitive art journal spread and were inspired to create your own. Don't forget to subscribe. I will see you again soon. Bye.